Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Play Monster Hunter Rise for the Nintendo Switch. In the last episode, we completed the urgent quest to defeat an Agnosum, and now we have a lot of new side quests to do. We even finished up the uh, last item we needed for our Great Izuchi full set, so let's go ahead and do that by going to Great Izuchi and purchasing the waste piece and equipping it there. There we go. Now we're looking good. I think this uh, this set gives us like critical eye, recovery speed, and constitution. It's not really amazing. The critical eye is kind of cool. Uh, gives you a little bit of extra crit chance. Probably great for uh, dual blades or fast attacking weapons too. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't really think it's the biggest you know boost to your critical eye uh, that you can get. But it's something. It's something to have and look forward to. Uh, Beggy set having the attack boost is pretty nice. And then, let's see what else we've unlocked. So we have the uh, Banahabra set, which looks different for females than it does for males, which is cool. Uh, significantly different. And then we have the Agnosum set, which is also really nice. I'm not sure if I like the female one or the male one more, uh, but they both look really good. Damn. Damn. I rocked this one for a while. This is a really cool set, overall. Let's see. What do we got? We have 16 defense. Oh my god. I think I used this set all the way through the rest of uh, low rank when I uh, was playing on my main. So we might end up just farming out another Agnosum set. Who knows? I gotta change things up though. I don't have to do everything the same. Also, fire attack. Ooh, quick sheet's not too bad. Recoil down. Looks like Banahabra has a nice little paralysis range set. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Hmm. So many choices. So many things to look at. But regardless, we're going to be spending a lot of time here uh, in Kimura Village. Uh, let's go ahead and prep our new weapon. I wonder what it should be. Should we do switch axe? Bow gun? Light bow gun. Oh god, we've unlocked more weapons to use. Oh god. Okay. Let's not, let's not get out of hand, alright? Let's not get out of hand. <laughs> Because knowing me, things are going to get real bad real quick. Okay. Let's just take a look at what we got. Light bow gun. Three piercing shot. Cool. Two piercing shot, too. Okay. So it's a little bit different. A little bit different overall. I mean, the only reason I'm looking at the uh, Great Izuchi set is because it matches our armor, and that's literally it and nothing else. I'm not sure what, the, what a good piercing set would be, then. Well, not that I know enough about the bowgun stuff to really be able to do it, but I kind of want to try some more piercing things. Okay, it's starting to look like everything's coming up great, Izuchi. It makes sense. It's a stabby boy. To be fair, though, a lot of these are question marks, which means we probably just haven't fought the monsters yet. Or well, we definitely haven't fought the monsters yet that dropped the parts that we need. So what we're going to do, we're going to go make an item in the ore tree. And then we're going to go ahead and upgrade to the Great Izuchi to spend less parts overall and equip that Wind Thief Light Bowgun 1. What a mouthful indeed. And uh, this one can use both piercing rounds, ammo 1 and ammo 2 types. The thing about the Light Bowguns, they uh, typically don't have as much ammunition or even ammo. Actually, I think they have more ammo types sometimes than the Heavy Bowguns, but mostly they just don't have as much capacity uh, overall. Uh, it can be upgraded using certain perks uh, in the game, but we're not really worried about that, are we? I don't think so. But the piercing shot, definitely we want that. Ammo, uh, normal ammo. And then probably... I wouldn't even, even say, like, sticky ammo is really that important right now. Uh, or anything like that. So yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna chill on the piercing shots overall. So let's go see what we can craft. The village is in your and over here. I know I said we're gonna go talk to everyone in the village, but now I'm like, let's go work on our light bow gun. It might be a terrible decision, who knows, right? We'll go OSP. Oh, actually, you know what? Loadout 1 already has a bunch of bullshit in there, so we're just gonna go ahead and use this loadout. Very nice. The game auto made this for us, so can't really complain too much. Let's just go around the village and talk to everyone while we can. Uh, again, red means that there's an urgent story progression thing that we need to do. Yellow is just a conversation that could potentially lead into a side quest. And then blue is legitimately a side objective, side quest thing for us to do. Which is Kagiro, which is probably about that subcamp. 
Thank you for securing the area. Now we may begin setting up camp. Once finished, it will be available for you to use as a new base of operation if you so wish. Oh. It should be ready for you before you embark on your next quest. Very nice. Always important to unlock your subcamps, because when your buddies come in to join you or randoms come in to join you, they can also use your subcamps as fast travel points, which is extremely advantageous to getting to the monster faster, or even uh, certain farming routes require that you use your sub camps. Really, really good stuff. Welcome. Master Payne, that artifact you have there, may I take a glimpse at it? Hmm, I see. Fascinating. Immensely fascinating indeed. This is an old message, a trace legacy of bygone eras, most obscure. Ostensibly, this record contains someone's story, yet undiscovered, that makes it an invaluable item. <laughs> For the longest time, perhaps influenced by my trade, I have sought such annals to broaden my understanding of the world. If you would be so kind as to show me any others you come across, I'd gladly offer a token of thanks, small as it may be. I'd venture that these old messages are fragmented into smaller notes, which lie in places remote and unaccustomed to human activity. I wish you luck in your hunt for them, and thank you in advance. See you later. And another one. Have a look at my way. Ah, good tidings, Master Payne. <laughs> I have stocked a special selection of items expressly suited to your very exploits. Ah. Each and every one is guaranteed to be of use to you. I highly recommend that you give them your consideration. Okay. Uh, typically, when you hit new star levels, you're able to jump on in to their uh, items. Currently, they're on sale, which is even better. We're going to go ahead and just grab 10 more trap tools while we're at it. Uh, and while we're at it, maybe 100 gunpowders. Why not? Gunpowders are really nice for crafting new uh, ammunitions later down the line. Uh, we can even look into some of these ammo types. And we have tons of normal ammo, so it should be okay there. Uh, not a whole lot of piercing ammo, but we can always craft that later on. And we're going to just keep peeking at everything. Okay, we're, we're looking pretty good. I don't think we need to worry about it too much right now. So we're not going to go ahead and do that. But we will do the lottery. It is 500 zenny. But you're always a winner. Let me just get a few extra items. Especially the large barrel bombs. Mm -mm -mm. And trap tools. Hey, I'll take them. Not too bad. Thanks, Kagiro. Looks like we have a new doggy uh, conversation here with Inukai. Hey, Payne. I was hoping you'd help me out with this little problem I have. I'm trying to develop some sort of new Palamute gear, but... uh. Accidentally, I ran out of the materials I need to finish my prototype. I'm sorry to ask, but would it be possible for you to share some of the materials that you have? In return, I'll give you a special piece of Palamute gear that I've already finished making. Not a bad deal, don't you think? Let me know if it sounds good. Alright, so we're going to need some Macalite ore, which will most likely be from the new area we've uh, unlocked. I'm not sure what it is. I think we've unlocked the swamp area at uh, rank 3. Uh, but we'll just get that as time goes on. So we just need three Macalite e gear, and we'll be able to unlock a new piece of Palmute gear. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and talk to Elder Fugan. Hey. Ah, Squirt! Don't you think you've worn out that Patalus of yours by now? If you didn't know, the effect you receive on contact with spirit birds change with the type of Patalus you're wearing. Tell you what, you've always been the hands-on type. So... I'll give you a new one to try out for yourself. Sound good? You can switch out your Pataluses to see which one best matches your style. Really, really great stuff here. I'll show it off in just a second. A true Kimura hunter knows their Pataluses. Finding which one, uh, which types work best for you is key to being a master hunter. Oh, he didn't just give me one more. He gave me three of them. All right, great. But we already had one on us already. So now we have all four Pataluses. So let's go ahead and jump into manage equipment, equipment loadouts, and, or not loadouts, rather, our change equipment. And we'll go into our Patalus selection. So the starting one is the hunting Patalus, which is like a default standard, uh, very flat bonus ratings across the board to keep you alive with health up, stamina up, a little bit of attack up, not a lot, and a okay amount of defense up. Strength Patalus, really, really, really nice. For uh, newer players, I feel like you should always focus on this if you're worried about a hunt. Go around the map, use the Strength Patalus, 
grab as much of the health up as you possibly can, and the stamina up while you're at it, uh, because this will give you the edge that you need to not get one shot. <laughs> If you don't die in Monster Hunter, you're playing it right. If you're dying in Monster Hunter, then you're probably playing it wrong. Uh, so what I always tell new players, don't focus on going for these crazy bullshit, like, builds where you have, like, negative 200 uh, da damage to, like, your elemental of ice, and then you go fight an ice monster and you start questioning why you're getting one shot. Yeah, a lot of the time, you just need to focus on staying alive. Then when you get good, then go for those builds. But if you're getting one shot and you're joining multiplayer quests and getting killed by people, probably not a good idea. So definitely go for that health up. Uh, Fortitude is okay. I would take health over defense nine times out of ten. But if you want to have a little bit of extra defense, not too bad. Uh, and on top of that, we got the attack or demon patalis, which gives us a little bit of attack up and defense up here. Uh, just because I really like this Strength Patalis, we're going to go ahead and jump on that one. Because having more health is always great. These are going to get upgraded as we go throughout the village quests as well. I think they go all the way up to Tier 3. Uh, and then we'll be able to get, like, a max of 100 bonus health or something like that. Really, really nice. I love it a lot. Uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and uh, go back to those equipment loadouts. We're going to make a new loadout here. Uh, ooh, not layered loadouts, but rather... Go to our sub menu, rename this bad boy to Izuchi. It usually takes me a while to type, I know. It is, alas, a Nintendo Switch. And uh, although the game is not in ha handheld mode, you can actually use the Switch's screen to, like, tap the buttons on it. It's very, very useful. It's kind of like uh, a lower end Wii U, man. That's pretty much what the Switch is. Because the Wii U at least had the extra controller you could type on. It was so nice! <sighs> it's like they downgraded, man, from the Wii U, but no one bought the Wii U. Makes me sad. How about this weather, hmm? Oh, hey, Payne. Thanks to you, Iori's buddies made it back safely. You're such a big help. Mm. Master Heyman is relieved as well. When he got word that Iori's buddies were safe, he had the biggest grin on his face. Speaking of, I think I've got some news that'll help hopefully put a smile on your face. You've unlocked three-star quests! And not only do you get new news, or new quests rather, but you get to travel to a new locale too. Make sure you prepare accordingly, okay? How are you today? I think we completed quite a lot of these in the last episode. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we did all five. We're the best. All right, we'll do bones, insects, or hunting helpers, and we'll do a large monster. Works for me. Hunting helpers are pretty easy to get. Uh, and here we go. So now we have a large selection of new quests here, but we still have people to talk to, places to see. But uh, we have a Tetranadron, Tetrahedron, <laughs> Kuluyaku, a, ooh, a Baroth, Great Rogi, okay. Oh yeah, I guess those things were called Rogis, not Eoprey. I'm a crazy person. Uh, and then Royal Ludroth, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, oh god! Wait, why is a kazoo a secondary monster? Just because it was from Monster Hunter 1, dude. You don't have to, like, do it like that. I guess I don't want everyone fighting the penis There's monsters so all day. I'd get confused, too. Alright, we'll come back to this in a little bit. Come again. Thank you, Hanoa. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Looks like we have a side quest here. Or, uh, optional side quest thing. What's up? Pain! We've got a major crisis here. Like, for realsies, my ingredient supplier was attacked by an army of terrible bloodthirsty monsters at the Shrine Ruins. I mean, the merchant wasn't hurt or anything, but they ended up dropping the goods all over the place, running away. Now they're super down and feeling all guilty and stuff. Can you get back those ingredients for us? I'll find out where they are and mark it on your map. It'd cheer up the supplier for sure. And you'd get to try my brand new Dango too. Pretty please, with a cherry on top. All right, nice. So we have a gathering quest to go do called Supply Run, and this will give us some more Dango. Oh, hi. Oh, hey, Payne. Guess what? I've gotten so good at making bunny Dango. They're turning out more delicious than ever. Cool, right? Mm. Now when you eat those same Dango, the effect you get from them is even more powerful and energizing than before. Mm -hmm. I've updated the menu. You should go check it out. Every dish on there is super yummy. You'll want to order a whole bunch of them. Bye -bye. Sounds great. Who else do I need to talk to? I think the uh, the bug guy, right? 
Yeah, I thought so. Soar with the great wire bug. Hey. Oh, yo, it's you. Heard you've been doing pretty well lately. Now that I'd, uh, ex not that I expect anything less from a rookie I took under my wing. Huh? To help you keep up the good work, here's some more great wire bugs I caught. Hope you'll find them useful. Ooh, and he has a optional sub-objective. I'm glad you passed by. There's something I need your help with. I need to know more about this creature, the rock lizard. Think you can get a picture of it for me? I mean, I could do it myself, but I've, uh, got other business to take care of. Besides, it's a good practice for you, and I'll return the favor. Deal? All right, we'll get more great wire bugs in return for a picture of a rock lizard, so we'll have to keep an eye out. Unfortunately, we did run across a rock lizard earlier, but we didn't actually get the time to uh, take a picture of it because it was after we completed a quest. A bit unfortunate, but it happens. Ooh, meow scenarios are now unlocked. Very good. Another excuse to buy more pets. Ooh, nice. Pain, thanks for always taking buddies with Mew on the hunt. On behalf of all the buddies here, I'd like to give you a token of thanks. Don't stop here, though. All right, so now we got a buddy ticket, which can be used to create some buddy armors from the armory. Always nice. And I think some uh, hunter weapons as well, which is really nice. What's up, Yori? To me. Watching you go off and on all those exciting adventures has the buddies itching to get in on some action themselves. Yep. That's why I decided to scout even more buddies for you to hire. It means a lot of paperwork and procedures, but if it'll make them happy, I don't mind. Think about hiring a few new ones, okay? Nice talking to you. No problemo, friendo. Pain, I've quite the important task for you. It has taken a great deal of effort to organize, but now the Meow Scenarios are finally ready for action. Meow Scenarios ride special buddy-sized kites high in the air, surveying the land to identify encroaching danger. And thus, we arrive at my request. The buddies at your side have grown quite strong. I ask that they join the Meow Scenarios efforts. Kimura points will be needed to maintain the kites but any materials your buddies find out in the re uh, reconnaissance are yours to keep. So, what do you say? It would help to ensure the safety of the village, if you have no qualms with it. Absolutely. But, we're gonna go back to Yori and uh, look into hiring some of these new pets he's got. This is where it can be better to actually hire some Palamutes as well, just because they are higher level. It doesn't really matter what you particularly choose. You go hire. There we go, nice level five gatherer. I'll take it. We will not rename. Skip that, thank you. And we have a level five doggo. Yes, please do not rename. Sweet. And while we're at it, we'll grab one more gatherer, why not? So your Meowth and Aries will level up uh, over time, albeit a lot slower than uh, having them training over here, but it's still something rather than nothing. And I believe we can actually start looking into upgrading our uh, submarines here. I can only imagine that's why Rondine is a quest for us. Oh, it's you. I have a client interested in acquiring some of Kimura's local specialties. Would you kindly provide me with a few? In return, I shall offer you, and only you, a very unique and special trade. Well, should you find this suggestion agreeable, you only need to supply a small number of local goods. As always, please deliver them to the guild, and they shall send them to me. Oh. You have my word that the compensation is well worth the trouble. Okay, so we're gonna need to look for some wisp lanterns and some boat shells. Uh, I think boat shells are in the Frostlands, and wisp lanterns, or wisp lanterns rather, I wanna call them planterns, uh, are in the shrines. Uh, so we should be able to find those, no problem. And that will unlock a new submarine for us to use. Always, always nice. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and... Well, we can chit-chat for a sec. I meant to actually go to the exchange, but that's okay. The Rampage. To think that this land has been plagued by such a calamity. It must have been fate that I came upon this place. Very well. I shall base my operations here for now. If you and your village intend to confront these monsters, then my wares will no doubt be of use to you. 
All right, so now we can exchange our Kimura points for some specialized goods that she has. Uh, we can trade points for nets, gunpowder, raw meat, herbal medicine, and energy drinks here. I think the best thing here is probably the energy drinks, as we use them quite often in a lot of builds. Uh, on top of that, always going to grab her special goods, which are things uh, like tapestries you can hang in your house. Always nice stuff. And uh, these rare finds are typically going to be things that are limited. Uh, so we can only get 10 of these. Might as well grab the sonic bombs just so I don't have to worry about gathering the screamers and then making them myself. Usually a lot easier that way anyway. Uh, under trade request though, I'm gonna cancel this trade request and see about sending a better Palico. Or Palamute, whatever it is. Yeah, we go. We'll send Patricia out. Uh, and we'll keep going for, I think, the same thing. Might as well, while we're at it. Yeah. Thunderbug. We're gonna need more anyway. We'll confirm it. Let's go. Skip that little cutscene, and we'll go ahead and get casual bargain up there. And, uh, while we're at it... Nah, we don't need to do the Lagnia Apple. What the Lagnia Apple does here is it adds three more of these ticks, but casual bargaining is pretty cheap. And Legnia Apples, right now, we only have three. And I'd rather use them for uh, Meow Scenaries or uh, leveling up our current pets. So we're just going to confirm this. And now the bargaining is going to be a little bit better. We're going to get maybe one or two extra Thunderbugs per quest completed. So not too bad. And uh, the more Thunderbugs, the better, because I want to make some more traps, damn it. Always good stuff. And now let's go over to the good old Meow Scenaries. We can send our boys out. Let's see if we even have enough buddies at the moment. We have one, two, three, and we have one additional uh, Palamute. That ought to do it. Okay, we'll select the destination, and we're going to be looking for these stars. This will unlock some specialized quests for us, and then we can just look at if we want uh, to fight specific monsters on top of this. Uh, since our pets are really low level, we're not going to be getting a lot. Uh, let's go for a variety here. We'll do the bottom one. That seems reasonably fine for me. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll select our buddies. Again, we really don't have much to choose from. There we go. And we'll drop a Lagnia Apple here to make it a tier two gathering outcome or expected outcome. Again, not great, but it's the best we got and we might as well do it. Let's go ahead and send them out for 100 points. Okay, and they're out there now. And each quest completed, we'll be able to get some bonus materials. Uh, and those special materials, we have a chance for uh, something that we can make, like a cool hunter armor set uh, with a little glowing herb there. Uh, each area has its own special glowing item that appears every now and again. So always great to go for those early on uh, when you need those parts. While we're at it, let's go rob our Kohoot. And we might as well deal with the uh, the pets that have been leveling so far. And we'll maybe toss a Legnia Apple in there. A couple of Steel Eggs is really, really nice right now, considering we're still lacking a little bit of cash. So these guys only have two quests left over. We're going to go ahead and just confirm what they've done so far. Holy crap. There you go. Look at these guys. We probably could have sent all these nerds out, but hey, it's all right. They're all going to level eventually. We're not really leveling any uh, gatherers, though, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but at the end of the day, hey, it is what it is. We'll just go ahead and use one Legnia Apple, and it maxes this out. And we're going to go ahead and confirm. There we go. So now they're going to get the most amount of EXP per quest completed. And now everything has kind of been set up in the way I really like. So every five quests, I usually just come back here and uh, set everything back up. Because usually after five quests, that means the Meow scenarios are done. The bird has the maximum amount of items. The uh, gathering area, the Argosy, is almost done, so I can start considering uh, changing things around or resetting the bargain. Uh, and then, on top of that, these guys will be half done. So every two sets of five, I can just give them another Legnia Apple, which most likely is given to me by the Kohoot. So it all kind of works in hand together and uh, is a pretty smooth going system overall. All right, let's go ahead over into our room. Keep talking to all our dudes. Usually this is because we've unlocked the meow scenarios. There we go. 
So we've seen all that before. Ooh, yes, we have some gossip to look at, because now we've completed our urgent quest. It is I, Fugashigi the Informant, at your service. Very well, I will impart to you the third dirty secret of Kamura. The meowstrious beast guildmaster Hojo sits upon is really a baby Tetsukabra, hence the name Tetsi. Its favorite food appears to be Panidego, but every once in a while it snacks on a fish from the river. By my whiskers, wasn't that juicy? I'll update you again once you've completed an urgent quest from Enoa. Thanks, buddy. That was very juicy. <laughs> yeah, that giant Tetsukabra. I don't even think that thing is in the game, though. Like, uh, obviously it's this thing right here. But, like, the adult version of that is not in the game. I don't think. <laughs> it's cute, though. We got the chef. So he's just gonna tell us the same thing that uh, the lady outside, uh, the bunny dango chef, uh, told us about. It's like that the uh, counter has been upgraded, so don't need to worry about it too much. What's up, master? I've been waiting for you. Yo, Ace! Looks like you're starting to get the hang of this whole hunting thing, huh? Sure thing. I guess that means the time has come. For what? For some new moves, yo! And I'm gonna teach them to you. Huh. They're actually called switch skills. Finding the right one for your uh, style is vital to unlocking your weapon's maximum potential. But enough talk. Go to any of your item boxes, even the one in your tent, and choose Change Switch Skill. Switch skills open up a wide world of hunting possibilities. Try out a bunch till you find one that speaks to you. Alright, so this is a nice little freebie that it gives us, uh, which is the second uh, switch skill for all weapons in the game. The way that you get the other switch skills is by crafting a certain rarity weapon of that uh, particular weapon. And then you have to do that individually for each individual of the 14 weapons, right? So you have to make one high rarity weapon, usually around rarity 4 or 5, maybe 6 will automatically get you it. Um, I don't believe it means that you have to make multiple. Uh, I think Eric's Gaming mentioned that, but I, I think a lot of the time I just make one really high-end version of a weapon. And then it just automatically gives me that perk. And usually that high-end rarity weapon is high rank, so we won't be getting that anytime soon. Uh, and then later, in high rank, we'll be getting quests that unlock the other switch skill. Uh, thankfully for those, you can use whatever weapon you want, even though the quest is about a specific weapon. Uh, and we will just do that quest and we'll get the last and final uh, upgraded switch skill. And then we'll have three interchangeable switch skills on each of the weapons. Which is really, really useful stuff. So we'll go to change switch skill here. And you can see here we have fanning vault and fanning maneuver for our ranged weapon. Uh, so at the moment, uh, we have fanning vault. A jumping action using wire bugs shots can be fired while in midair. And while airborne, you can fire wyvern blast directly underneath to land a direct hit on a monster. I love this perk. It's so sick. I haven't learned anything about the other... Uh, like light bowgun maneuvers, so let's check this one out. A maneuver using a wire bug and centrifugal uh, or fugal force is quickly flank is to quickly flank left or right. Also temporarily ups attack power. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, shots can be fired while in motion. Okay, that actually looks that sounds really fun too. Both fanning vault and fanning maneuver sound really really nice, uh, especially for maneuverability for sure. Uh, we'll have to try both of them out um, as we go along here. And one last dialogue box. We're just going to skip through this one because it's the same thing that the merchant outside told us. And there you go. That's pretty much all of Kimura Village now ready to go for tier number three. And in the next episode, we'll start focusing on tier three quests. I apologize for there being no actual quests done in this episode, but when there's lots of dialogue to do and a lot of things to look at, uh, sometimes you just got to sit back and relax and focus on Kimura Village, man. But in the next one, we're going to be hitting them quests up hard with our light bow gun giving it a shot, and hopefully things will go well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Akimane101. If you'd like to support the series, consider giving them a like. Of course, there's a playlist down below all the time for you guys to go check out and timestamps uh, for you to skip through the videos. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to know when the next video goes live. Take it easy.